changes revs with the um, with the main motor throttle setting. Let that slow down. So now I'll go full throttle. So it's obviously governed. Obviously governed, but the tail motor changes this directly with the full input. You see the thrust increasing with throttle. 15 grams. And uh, now. So as the throttle comes up, well it's a 57% throttle, the so tail comes up as well. And then shut it down to zero. Takes a moment to shut off. Now the other thing is if we start it and then slam the throttle open. Uh, 
It almost seems, seems as though the tail motor revs are dialed into the main motor revs now. Oh, I can feel the heat. Feel the heat in the uh, <laughs> from the tail motor wiring at that. If I wiggle the um, wiggle the uh, collective stick around there, we shouldn't be see any movement until we start getting fairly well down. Okay, so that's showing it at full collective on the K130 is a massive 28.9 degrees. And uh, it's reading the wrong way, so this is positive pitch now, and, and you know, 27.8 in the other direction. Uh, another thing I find with this is just interesting to see what the return to zero is like. So you see that struggling to get back to zero. If I go uh, to negative pitch, go back to zero there, that's actually not too bad if I do it just sort of slowly. That's actually not too bad. Go positive. And yeah, so you see it's it's been perhaps showing about a 0.3 of a degree return difference depending on which way we go from. And the maximum pitch, which uh, you know, 22, 23 degrees. That's all before. We're just gonna look at the return to zero on there. So Beautiful back to zero, doesn't matter whether we come fast, maybe just overshoots a little bit on the servos if you do it quickly. Um, and then from a positive pitch, but that return to zero is just tremendous on there. And certainly better than the K130 in that respect. Just going to look at the setup that I'm flying on currently. Um, so on a standard throttle curve, I'm starting off at minus four degrees, and then uh, up to about seventeen and a half degrees, which is running at plus thirty-five throttle in the Devo, or sixty-seven and a half percent throttle. Uh, if we look at go to my idle one, so basically straight curve. So I'm running minus 14 to more or less plus 14 and running that at plus 50 throttle, uh, which is 75%. And if we go, so that was, that was my kind of like low head speed mode. And then if we go to my higher head speed mode, which is more Eshin's recommended settings, um, we're looking at obviously 11 and a half degrees negative. And then, yeah, about 11 and a half degrees each way. Um, so that's on a head throttle setting of plus 75 on the De Devo or 87 and a half. Right, so they highlight two ranges that they suggest um, for collective, which, which for general flying they're saying uh, between 35 and 65% are on the Devo, that's plus or minus 30. So that equates to. My minus 30, so 9.6 degrees. So yeah, around about nine and a half degrees each each way is is their 35 to 65. And then if we go to their recommended 3D settings, uh, which will be 32 to about 32 to 68, um, or on the Devo that'll be plus and minus 36 on there, so 11. 0.3, so a bit over, yeah, close on 11.4 or 11, just under 11.5 degrees is the recommended 3D setting on there. So looking at the results from bench testing, the peak peaks measured between the two helicopters were broadly very similar, you know, within the realms of what I was able to measure. It may have been that the K130 peak was actually higher, but if so, it was only very, very momentary. But the E160 has got a you know, really significant advantage because of the fact that it maintains its, its, uh, its revs under load. So in other words, it just keeps providing a lot of thrust, whereas the yeah, the K K130, the, the thrust drops away as the revs plummet. 
Uh, the tail motor thrust has also significantly improved. Doesn't look so fantastic on that particular graph, but you know, it's virtually a fifty percent increase. Um, so you know, again, and when you look at the thrust to weight, I mean, the K one thirty is lighter. You see that the peak performance is almost equal, but on the right hand side there, you can see that the um, sustained thrust has almost doubled that of the K130s. This, this is massive. So, you know, particularly when you're learning 3D, quite often you end up getting things wrong, your collective management on the radio is poor, and you know, you, you end up with a helicopter like the K130, you bog the revs down, you lose thrust, and, and you, you might end up crashing instead of flying out of a situation. Uh, with the E160, as you as you load it up, you get things wrong. Doesn't matter; it just keeps hauling. So the K130 is a bit of a high rev screamer. You know, look on there. You know, we're still seeing uh, up to nearly 7,000 revs no load on it. You know, in comparison, you know, maybe with higher throttle settings, we'd see up to about 5,000 revs on the E160. Um, and but as the loadings increase, the revs plummet. So you know, look look at that on the on the uh, K130. You know, from around about seven thousand revs no load, we're dropping down to nearly three thousand revs. So the E160 is is really quite outstanding in this respect. It just keeps hauling and hauling under load. In terms of how these measurements were derived for revs. And then we basically use it, the app Audacity, and that's done by stripping out the sound files into MP3 files, running those into Audacity, and then you can analyze segments of the file. So essentially, I look at a video, look at the segment that I was interested in, and then analyze and maybe a one second segment of it to produce a graph like that at the bottom. And generally, the left hand peak. Um, First peak on there will will represent the frequency of the rotating blades, and so you can then calculate out the head speed on that. And it tends to work out very well. You can do a whole lot of tests in different sections, and it tends to be very repeatable. So it produces good results, and it gives you the advantage that you can actually test things under under load. You know, in this case, actually measure the load at the time.